Miss Renee Starr, what a great lady she was, uh, a wonderful friend to Nancy and I. And we loved her much and we'll cherish her memory. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just uh, praise your holy name and thank you for the great and almighty God that you are. Thank you for Renee and her life. Thank you for this day and pray that you bless the Lord today, Lord. And, uh, we just uh, thank you that we had a part of her life, Lord, and uh, what a great name she was. And, uh, thank you for all the lives that she did touch through the years, Lord. So we uh, just uh, thank you and pray you for all things, Lord. And, I pray that in the, that you bless her uh, family, Lord, in, in the coming days and weeks ahead as uh, they reflect on your memory and her memory, Lord, I pray that uh, you bless them, Lord, and uh, they'll have some sad times and some happy times, Lord, and uh, I pray that you bless them in those times, and uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for all your many, many blessings. Thank you for the great lady that she was, Lord, and uh, thank you that, uh, uh, that you, we were blessed uh, to be friends of her, Lord, through the years. And we'll cherish that, Lord. And, and uh, God, we just uh, just pray for you and thank you again for her life. And Lord, uh, again, thank you to bless her family. And uh, thank you and pray for you in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for being here and welcome you back. It's kind of like we were just here last year. Time flies, but this is going to be a great, good old, another homecoming Jupiter Road Baptist Church service. I hope it brings back great memories, but the most important thing is we're going to celebrate a wonderful life. There's joy here today because of the great person Wanell Starks was and the influence she was on her life. Wanell Warren Starks was born to Benjamin Sloan Warren and Opal Faye Tyner Warren on June 6, 1933, D-Day, in Cairns, Texas. She was proud to say she was from the same town as Big Tex. She was born the fourth of six siblings. When Elle is preceded in death by both her parents, her adoring husband, James Aubrey Starks, and her siblings, Blundell Early, Bobby Joe Warren, Maury Whalen Warren, Ted Howard Warren, and Jesse Wendell Warren. When Elle is survived by her daughters, Oma Laurel Shirley of Dallas, Texas, Lisa Lynn Russo of Irving, Texas, and Leslie Jean Darby of Kilgore, Texas. She had six grandchildren, Amber Laura Lee, Aaron of Dallas, Texas, is her husband. Aaron Winnell Broccoli, Damien of the Colony, Texas, Damien, her husband. Stephen Matthew Shirley, Jennifer of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Anna Lisa Russo of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Haley Elizabeth Nicodemus, Alex, her husband of Athens, Texas. And James Tyner Darby of Midland, Texas. And she was blessed with eight great grandchildren. James Hayden Warren of Athens, Texas, Asher Harden Lee, Elijah Aaron Lee, and Stevie Grace Lee of Dallas, Texas, Silas Aubrey Shirley, Judah Clyde Shirley, Ezra Wanell Shirley, and Naomi Jewel Shirley of Lake Charles, Louisiana. She cherished her relationships with her sons in law, Steve Shirley and Rob Russo along with scores of extended family and friends from whom she loved to sit and to visit through the years. Wanell's honorary ushers are Brian Haas, who couldn't be with us today, he's in Belgium, Keith Harry, Steve O'Kelly, Brian Tillman, Taylor Tokar, Tyler Tokar, David Whittington, and Steve Whittington. Like I said, today's going to be a celebration It'll bring back memories, and one of those great memories, and a person that one will love to hear to sing, is going to sing for us right now, Brother Mel Duke. Uncle Mel, yes.
Y'all don't know how hard it is for me to stand up here for some of you that's got the voice that needs to be up here singing. What else? Love to hear me sing. I sang to her the day she passed away. I sang, got into her face and sang Amazing Grace. Just her and I. And what a blessing it was and is for me to sing amazing words to her. I want to sing amazing grace for you right now. But this is going to be different. I want you to sing to me. Amazing grace. No more tears to bid me 
side of the river of life, where the charming roses bloom forever, and where separation comes no more. If we never meet again, this side of
not going to stay up here too very often. It's not about me, but it's about my grandma. But she, uh, she was, she was the best friend I ever had. I'm the youngest out of all of her grandchildren, and we had a very, very close, tight relationship. And uh, she, she made me, she gave me a good example of what to look for in a woman when I, when I get married, when I have a wife, when I, when I want to build a family, what kind of lady I'd like. And um, I just want to say thank you for all of you who loved her, who were her friends, and who were true people in her life. So thank you all very much. Every time I attend a memorial service, as I've gotten older, it's like being in a bus terminal, being all excited about taking the trip, seeing my friends get on and then closing the door and saying, you take it next time. I feel that way today. Just a little, just a little jealous, I suppose, because uh, a dear friend has gotten on that bus and she's gone and the angel says your time's coming and brother Jamie's here today that's what he'd want you to know if you're not saved your time's coming I want to make sure you get on the right bus this farther along song is one that was Miss Winnell's one of her favorites and when I was a young man who first came to Jupiter Road I think this was number 305 in the heavenly highways <laughs> But when you're young, this song doesn't mean a lot to you. But in later years, you realize that you have reached that farther along. And so today, we want to do this song in Miss Winnell's honor. Tempting try we to wonder why it should be thus all the day long and while there are others living in the past Never sin hold it wrong. Farther along, we know all about it. Farther. Stand by So cheer up My brother And live in The sunshine We'll understand it All by And taken our loved ones, leaving our homes and so lonely and dreary. That's when we wonder. Why others prosper Living so wicked Year after year But farther along We know all about Oh. 
put together would probably tell me what Cuda was about. To me, she was um, uh, jigsaw puzzles at Christmas time. And she was um, Scrabble. She didn't do it very well, but she liked to play Scrabble. So I'm sure it's up there. I was telling them last night, I know that Papa's giving them heck, heck up there. So it's about time that Cooter got up there to kind of smooth out the edges up there. So that's in celebration. You know, um, it is a celebrate, a time to celebrate for Cooter and Pop at this point. They're together up there. The souls actually meld together. So let's pray for the celebration of the, the life of Cooter. Father, we just thank you so much for, for Cooter. We thank you for how she touched all of our lives in a different way. And we all see her maybe just a little differently. But to each of us, she's a part of our lives. And now that she, I know that she's happy where she is now. She's there with, with Baba. And they were such two souls that seemed just to be together. And we just want to celebrate, not in tears, but with happiness right now as well. And the joy that I see that she has, I just know that the angels are singing up there now with her being in heaven. And it is a proud and happy time. It's maybe somewhat of a sad time to give her to you for us, but we know it's a joyful time for her. And again, again Lord, we just celebrate. Celebrate not necessarily, not necessarily Cooter leaving us, but joining you in heaven. And we ask this and say this in our precious Jesus' name. Amen. Um, what everybody may not realize, this is very important, is that Daddy is here. Right down there. I picked him up at the funeral home myself. So uh, we know that he's in, really in heaven and that he's looking down on this day. On behalf of my sisters and myself, I want to thank you for coming today and honoring my mother. It means so much to all of us. Some, so many have come from so far. My friend Jane, Jeannie came from Florida again. Thank you, Jeannie, I love you. My friend Melissa. My sister in the Lord, Kathy. What's your last dance <laughs> If you don't have a good church, I go to Bird. What do I go? <laughs> uh, Northwest Bible Church. And we're in the intergenerational class, and I have two of my uh, dear classmates that have joined me today and come to honor my mother, and I thank you all. This picture we had up until just minutes before the service, the picture of Mother and Daddy at the piano that everybody's seen a thousand times. And Steve Shirley made possible this beautiful portrait of our mother. And I want to thank him. Thank you, Steve. This is a precious gift. I am going to read in Proverbs as well, because if there ever was a, 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 a Proverbs woman, it was my mother. Who can find a virtuous woman? And y'all, I read out King James. I'm just old. I mean, you know. But this Bible is a big old Bible. So I was at a garage sale and somebody gave it to me. It's a, it is big words. What do you call that? Big letter edition. Yeah, the words of Jesus are in red. So this is, you know, I'm just old. It's a Bible that I grew up on. Those Bibles are fine. I'm not saying. But this is, this is my Bible. Who can find a virtuous one? For her heart is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I want to tell you a story. My dad was saved, my parents were saved when I was nine years old. I do not remember during those nine years going to church with my mom and dad. I remember one time we lived in Eustis, Texas. My mother was raised very, very strict Church of Christ. All of her family, all of them, I mean staunch. As staunch as we are Baptists, they are that strong Church of Christ. And so 
in, in the town of Eustis, there was a little Baptist church, there was a little church, Christ church. Me and Daddy went to the Baptist church, and Mama and the, uh, my sisters went to the church of Christ church one time. That's all I remember. It may not be true, but that's what I remember. <laughs> and so, and y'all have all heard this story. If you heard my daddy preach it all about his first cousin, Jack, uh, what was his name? Lisa, what was his name? Jack. Say it. I, I don't have my hair name. <laughs> Say it. Alan. Jack Allen. <laughs> was preaching a, a weekend revival at the uh, Missionary Baptist Church over in South Garden. And so uh, we went on Friday night, first time ever sat in church. We went back Saturday night, second time I ever sat in church with my mom and daddy. We went back Sunday morning. We went back Sunday night. And I remember my daddy's cousin. He, the, daddy had the door open and he had his head down there. Jamie, you need to accept the Lord. You need to get saved. I want to see you in heaven. My daddy said, no, Jack, not tonight. He went home. And mother said that he said it right straight up in bed. He said, I'm going over my mama's and I'm going to get saved. He said, that's what he did. And the next morning, I do remember him sitting at the table with the Bible open. I don't know what Bible he has. It's probably one memo gave him or one of us kids that my mom gave us. And so our life was changed forever. Ever. And so we were at that church house on Wednesday night, that first note of the invitation. You know, because Baptists can't meet without having an invitation. And so my daddy's right down that aisle. And my obedient mother was right behind him. And yes. She was obedient. She wanted to run it down here. She was obedient. My dad had some crazy ideas. I know that I will get several. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> and my mother followed him. I, I know she had to know that, that this was the wildest idea that God ever thought about, but she followed him. She was obedient to him. And ladies, I know that that's not a popular word with us. But it is in the scripture, and I'm probably in their Bible too. <laughs> and so she was submissive. She submitted her will to his. And, she, well, maybe not to his, but to God's first. She submitted to God. She submitted to God by following him down that aisle that day. And then... Through, I'm telling you, there was a lot of um, discord at times in the church. And my mother was the one who sat there in those horrible times of pain and encouraged my dad and told him what a great man he was and followed him and honored him and encouraged him. And Jupiter Road Baptist Church would not have been, been what it is if it had not been for my mother. Because I don't think I would have done it. <laughs> my mother was fun. She was so fun. I can tell you all this story. There was a time in our church where everything that moved was wrong. I know some of y'all don't may not remember those days. These were early on. And somebody in the church believed playing cards was wrong. <laughs> Mother would lock the front door and we play cards. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell Papa. Don't tell Daddy. She don't tell me Daddy. <laughs> she even let us go mix bathing one time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she did. <laughs> so she was fun. And that if you've ever been in the ministry, you need humor. You need somebody that is fun. You need to look on. Not let your troubles get you down. Not let them defeat you. And that was my mother. My mother had integrity. My mother loved people where they were. 
She, no matter what they had done, she loved them. I heard, uh, we had, remember when we used to have those ladies things, June Hunt said one year, and it made such an impression on me. If you really want to love someone, love them when they least deserve it. That is a godly love. That is God's love. And my mother had that love. Thank you for coming to honor my mother today. Thank you, Laurel. And I want to say on behalf of especially Laurel, Lisa, and Stark's family, again, thank you for being here. And I want to thank you so much for the great honor and the privilege it is to be here and share, and not a funeral, but a memorial celebration of a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady. Some of the things that you all wrote down, Faith Warren, she was the best aunt. I loved calling her Cooter. G.J. Warren, I love that whenever I saw her and Uncle Jamie, we never skipped a beat. Carol Warren, she loved desserts, and her rule was, you know, she often ate them first. That was important. Diane Shira, I remember that I always thought she was the best pastor's wife I ever met. She was so supportive of Preacher Starks. Keith Herod, she defined grace with a little side of dry humor. I loved her. Anita Alexander, a river preacher from the pulpit saying, well, now where are you? Doesn't she look good? <laughs> Dean Mills, I do believe that Miss Wonell remembers every member that ever passed through the doors of Jupiter Baptist Church. Time and time again, as old J.R.E. Sears gathered for different occasions, we would come to the point of what was that person's name? You can go to Wonell and she would know who they were. Sharon Newton Johnson, she always made fun of us three Newton kids at potluck dinners. What did Mama bring? She wants Mama's desserts as much as we did. Sue Mills, she told me I was marrying a Texas boy and would need to learn to make him pinto beans. She instructed me to buy a casserole brand, sort them, add an onion, and put them in a crock pot. All things I knew nothing about from being from Michigan. Good thing she did. We couldn't afford much else for quite a while. She also told me people down here eat gravy for breakfast. <laughs> That's just some of the comments that people wrote. I can't read them all, but it's just precious to me to read those things that people wrote about Cooter and what she meant. She just adored and loved her family, especially her grandkids. She loved her daughters. She loved Lorella, Lisa, and Leslie. She thought the world of y'all, but as parents, y'all know Especially the ones I talked to. I haven't lived it yet, but I heard when their grandkids come along, your kids kind of disappear. <laughs> and she loved her grandkids. She cherished her great grandkids. She thought the world of y'all, she loved you so, so very much. It was just a year ago, and I believe, Steve, if I'm right, that picture was taken and commissioned based off of taking a picture of her last year and preacher's celebration service. That was her that day. And how unique it is, one year later, we're here. I remember standing there in the room after she had passed. A lifeless body in that bed, in that room at Walnut Place, there with some of the family members. And I talked to Lisa, Leslie, and Narell, just as we did last night. And I said, you know, the dynamics of your family are changing right now. And some of you, like me, that will understand that when your parents are gone, your grandparents are gone, all your great uncles and aunts, and everybody else is gone, you become what I call the top of the food chain. <laughs> and you're the leaders now. And the dynamics of the family change because, especially when you have somebody like Preacher and Wanell, they were the focus, the center of so many things in family that now you have to work because the dynamics change. And for us today as a church family, Things change. This church was great, built on great leadership, and everything rises and falls on leadership. Take a look around at this room right now. Look at the people. Look at the memories in this room. This is a church family. It was a unique church. It was a family-loving church, and it wasn't like a lot of the factory churches that I call them we have today. 
Brother Jamie was a great pastor, but Wonell was a jewel of a pastor's wife. As was said, she was so committed to him in the ministry that I really believe that JRBC was built on the foundation of Christ, but I truly believe that Cluter was Cooter, as we love to call her, was the clue and the foundation that held this ministry together. She really was. She was a magnificent woman. Talking to Nancy Turner the last week, and she said, How are, Jeff, how are we going to replace her? There's never going to be such a wonderful, loving, inspirational woman like Wonell Cooter Starks. She had a strong marriage. She supported her husband. She had to think of this. She was married to Jamie Starks for nearly 65 years. And at least nine of those years, he wasn't even a Christian. So think about that, how tough he was. But you know, preacher never failed to say, I love you with all my heart. And I love it because every time I'd see Cooter, I'd kiss her on the forehead and I'd call her my beautiful and we'd visit and we'd have our talks together. And when I'd leave, I'd kiss her on the forehead and said, I love you. And you know how the wit and sarcasm she had? She'd go, with all my heart. <laughs> Just the way Preacher did. Ever since 1993, when I first met her, she greeted me, greeted me with a smile and always said, how you doing? And you'll know that she always had the knack of turning the conversation from her right back to you within seconds. It was never about her, it was about others. She was a living example of love and passion for others. She was a lady with great dignity and character. She did discipline. The girl said, I, I don't know if she did that or not, knowing Laurel, Lisa, and Leslie, but she did discipline. And she was tough when she needed to be, but all the grandkids and the daughters say that she was just so much fun. And she was such a lady. But they said, even up until the time they went to college, she would just come along and take them down and wrestle them. And she would win. Laurel said they couldn't beat her. She loved sports. We always made sure we called that she knew when the game was going to be on. And she loved to watch football and she loved to watch baseball. And she just wasn't just a passing viewer. She knew the players. She loved her Cowboys. She loved sports. She had a great mind. And that was one of the hard things that she was trapped in that aging body. But she just had a mind, a wit. And she would just say funny things all the time. And you could just mention, you know, there was a guy who was tall and homely, David Whittington. <laughs> she loved you guys. She thought the world of you gentlemen and others in here, helping her move and always making her laugh and always entertaining her. You are her family. You are her children. She always dressed pretty. She was always beautiful. And she loved to wear the hats. And I love seeing that. You see very few ladies do this. Anymore, and I love seeing you ladies in hats today. She loved purple. And she loved fashion, whether she was wearing clothes from needless markups or she bought them from the Goodwill store. She loved the Goodwill store so much, I think the grandkids one year bought her a gift certificate to the Goodwill store. She called it GSW. And one thing, Alex, we were talking around the family last night, and Alex was married to Haley, a wonderful young man. He said something we all realized, and Kelly knew this too. She was having a bad day. She brought this Christmas tree in. The ladies did beautiful decorations today. Janie and Jane and Kelly and Leslie and all. She, she could just, as Alex says, she could see right through you. She had a special gift. She had a special spirit that when something was wrong, she could go, what, what's going on in your life? What's wrong? She knew it. She loved. She cared. You know, she loved many things. She loved the grandkids and she loved working with them and playing with them. And they said she loved to break the rules. Now, not illegal rules, but, you know, things that they're not supposed to be doing or running into things or eating things they shouldn't be eating. Or Tyler said going out and mudding in the Jeep and, and doing some crazy things. And he'd always, she'd always say, don't tell Papa. And Rob, yes, yeah, she, loved, she loved candy, but especially the Reese's and the Snickers. And you might be, it's not trick or treat, but you might be wondering why we have bowls of candy back there. Because she wanted everybody to have some candy. 
So you know, as believers in Christ, one of the sacraments we take communion. The bread and the cup. As often as you eat and drink, remember the, the body and the blood shed of Christ on the cross. Well, we hope that when you leave today, you'll say, take communion and you'll have cooter communion. <laughs> and as often as you eat Snickers and Reese's, we hope that you'll remember cooter. Something funny last night, we were telling stories about Cooter and, and Aaron said this one time they were out at the farm doing things they weren't supposed to be doing and Aaron got hurt pretty bad on a four-wheeler. Had to go to the emergency room because this was very ER worthy. But on the way to the hospital, Cooter stops for gas. <laughs> stops at the convenience store and I can see Cooter, you know. I'm going in to get a Coke and Snickers. You want anything? But that's the kind of person she was. She was just so carefree and just so genuine. You know, a lot of you have probably been to funerals in your life. And you hear things about people that you wish you knew or got to do them better. You hear about things that you knew that person and wondered who that person really was. But did you ever think about if that person could be at the funeral right now in their memorial celebration? What would they say? Well, we know what Kudu would say. Because she did. Let's watch. <laughs> That's all right, just center it as best you can. There you go, right there. Just play it right there. In closing, I want to say a few words about my life as a Christian. The Lord has been my best friend for many years. And I love him and have tried to please him, but I know some of our times I've gone astray. But I want to say it pays to serve the Lord. We've had nothing but happiness and joy in that journey with Christ. I told you maybe when he got saved, he just changed bosses. He was going down this road and Christ turned him around. Made him whole, therefore I got saved, and eventually our girls got saved. It's a joy to serve the Lord, worship Him, and in closing, I want to say that I always told Jamie that I would have the last word. <laughs> That was very important of her, that she got the last word. That's the epitome of her love and her character and her orderliness and her rebel. You know, Lisa said something so important about Cooter. Cooter made a choice. She made a choice to minister in love. Even in the days when it would have been so easy to be negative, she made a choice to love and minister. When you were around Winnell, something was different about her because of the way she loved and the way she lived. She was a sister in Christ and she loved you for you no matter what. She was always there to exhort others and not to destroy you. I can remember seeing her with so many people that would come into her room at Walnut Place. And even to the last days, when people would come in, she knew everybody's name. She knew their children. She knew their issues. She would talk to them and she would love them. And she made the choice in those days when she was trapped in that body and couldn't move around a lot. 
She made the choice to still love and not complain and not to whine, but to minister to people who had needs with every breath she had. In fact, in those last days when she was laying there and she couldn't communicate, those workers would come in and, and their heart was broken that they couldn't talk to one else. Because that's the impact that she had on lives everywhere she went. You know, preacher inspired us to read the Word. I don't know if you remember, but he read five Psalms, one proverb, and ch nine chapters in the New Testament every month, and the Old Testament twice a year. He did that for 33 years. He taught us about the Word. He knew the Word. And he challenged us to do the same thing. And I've tried to do that over the decades in reading proverb every month. And Solomon wrote Proverbs for this reason. It's written down, as he said in the beginning of Proverbs, so that we'll know how to live well and right. The understanding of what life means and where it's going. It's a manual for living. Solomon wrote that to his young son and young men on here's how life is. Here's what you need to do to live life. And then just after that book, Solomon, you know, was a, a man that God told him, I'll give you anything you want, anything you ask. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And God not only blessed him with wisdom, but he blessed him with much material goods. Solomon was wise. But after Proverbs, we see another book that Solomon wrote, Ecclesiastes. And it's a book that he's writing about his experience in life. And Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, it's smoke or a vapor. Nothing but smoke. There's nothing to anything. It's all smoke. It's like spitting in the wind. Some of the things he says in the beginning of Ecclesiastes, one generation goes its way, the next one arrives, but nothing changes. It's business as usual for old planet Earth. The sun comes up, the sun goes down, then it does it again and again, the same old round. The wind blows south, the wind blows north. Around and around and around it blows, blowing this way and then that. All the rivers flow into the sea, but the sea never fills up. The river keeps flowing to the same old place then starts over and does it again. What was it? What will it be again? What happened? Will happen again. There's nothing new on earth. Year after year, it's the same old thing. Does someone call out, hey, this is new. Don't get excited. It's the same old story. Nobody remembers what happened yesterday and the things that will happen tomorrow. Nobody remembered them either. Don't count on being remembered either. He did great things. He built houses, planted vineyards, designed gardens and park, parks, parks. He planted a variety of fruit trees, made pools of water, irrigated grove trees. He had slaves, male and female, and he had them have children, and he had more slaves. He had large herds and flocks, larger than any before me in Jerusalem. He piled up silver and gold from kings and kingdoms. He gathered singers to entertain him with songs. He had all kinds of pleasures. Oh, how I prospered. I left all my predecessors in Jerusalem far behind me, left them far in the dust. I never said no to myself. I gave in to every impulse. I held nothing back. And he talks about in chapter 3, there's a right thing for birth and another for death, for planets and for times to kill, times to heal, times to destroy, times to construct. And he goes on and on about the different things in life. And he says it's all smoke. Nothing but smoke. Nothing but vapor. It's spitting in the wind. He said, toward the end of Proverbs, your death date tells more about you than your birth date. And he said, all life leads to death. Hopefully you got one of these when you came in. And I call it the Wanell Cooter Starks Court of Life. It has three beads on the end, WCS, that's what it stands for. And if you didn't get one, and there's none left, just after the service, I want you to put your name and address on a card here and I'll mail it to you. So this isn't one of those TV preachers that send me a check and I'll know you're one L to record of life. But this is significant. I wanted you to see this. I call this the court of life. And I don't know if you remember, I was telling you, here's the story that uh, Rob, I was going to tell you all uh, before. A long time ago in the 60s, when kids were born in the hospital, do you remember they used to spell out their name in beads on a bracelet and put it on their wrist? That's how they identified them. So this cord kind of signifies the birth of one L. Cooter Starks at the beginning with the beads at the top. Now, I looked on Social Security because I figured they keep track of people pretty well. They pay a lot of them until they pass from this earth. And they said that in the lifespan of people, men who reach 65 usually go on to live 
84.3 years. Women who reach 65 get about three years more. They live on to be 86.6 years old. And one out of four 65-year-olds will live past 90, and one out of 10 will live past 65. So in this little chord here, if you start with Cooter's birth, she was blessed. She got to live those extra years. She was uh, married to preacher almost 65 years, and she was going to turn 60, 85 this year, this June. Was it 85? She's 84, that's right. But I want you to look at this. There's a knot by itself at the other end of the cord. And I want you to look at your life from birth, that if you're blessed and you get to be that 86, where are you on that timeline? I figure I'm probably right about there. And I want you, as we begin to close out this morning, to keep this cord in remembrance of Cooter's life. And remember the life you have. Some may be blessed and are already at the knot and beyond and are going to get those 90 years. But I want you to take into account what Solomon said about life and about the smoke. And a lot of you that have lived long lives, you know what I'm talking about. The smoke, the vapor on how fast life goes. Brother James O'Kelly and I were just talking here and reminiscing on all the faces we've seen here that from all the years we've known and, and how everybody looks the same, they're just older. <laughs> you can still see that youthful person in there. But you know how fast things have flown by. And what does Solomon tell us about that smoke? He tells us to fear God. Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but are powerless to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can kill both the soul and the body in hell. He tells us to be generous. He tells us to invest in acts of charity, to be a blessing of others. He tells us don't take a single day for granted. Here's what Bonnell Cooter starts on that timeline, on what life you have left till you get to that knot. In the example of the life she lived, here's what she would want you to know. Take my life and let it be consecrated. I am no longer, O oh Lord. But thanks be to God who always puts us on display in Christ and spreads through us in every place the scent of knowing Him. Did you hear that? Spreads through us in every place the scent of knowing Him. For to God, we are all the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. For we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as our Lord. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything, but that now, as always, with all boldness, Christ will be highly honored in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, working side by side for the faith of the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Bonnell Cooter Starks. She made that choice. But she did say that she found Christ as her Savior. And the second thing I think she would really want you to know, besides serving and loving, and you know Cooter would always say this, love them where they're at, not where you want them to be. Every person in our life, whether it be family or friends, we're all sinners in Christ, but we're perfected in Him. And she had the knack, she had the gift, whether it's being a rebel, whether it's breaking the rules and having fun, whether it's loving and sharing the gospel, she took every person. And that was hard for her a lot of times because, see, she was the wife of a pastor. And she knew the church. And she couldn't have a lot of close friends because of being the wife of a pastor and knowing a lot of things and knowing what some people do to a pastor. She still loved them where they're at, not where she wanted them to be. She had faith in God. She knew absolute truth. She knew we believed in one God. You see, there's people that may believe in one God as we do and that that God exists in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But there are pagans that believe that there are many gods. There are some people, atheists, that don't believe there's a God at all. But that's their faith. 
And we're each accountable to God and responsible for that faith. Cooter believed in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that He was her Savior. She also believed in God's Word. You see, we believe this book was given to us by God. It's a collection of historical, uh, historical documents written by eyewitnesses who during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses claim to see supernatural events, not of human nature, but of divine nature, and have been inspired by God to write down those experiences and by the inspiration of God has been canonized into His Word. She believed in God as our Lord, God, and Savior. And she believed in His Word. She believed that Jesus was Messiah. The one that came to die for us. He came as a lamb. She knows He's coming back as a lion. And she's coming with Him now. He came as a servant. He's coming back as a king. He's not just almighty. He is the mighty of all. He's the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. And folks, that's the real dilly dilly. He is our God. He's coming back. Ecclesiastes 7.20, why do we need a God? Because He says, Solomon told us, for there isn't a righteous person, righteous person in earth who does only good and never sins. We're all sinners, it says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there's no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.12, therefore, since in sin entered the world through one man, who was that? Adam, and death by sin. In that way, death passed upon all people because all have sinned. Romans 6.23, for the wages of that sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8, God demonstrates His own love toward us, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. John 3.3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Cooter was born again. On that day with Haley and Darrell and Jane in that room, Haley said when she passed, you saw that spirit depart. That was the moment she left this world being born again and was birthed into eternal life to be with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 4. 1 John 4.10 says, here's what love is. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and gave His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. John 3.16 and 17, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Acts 4.12, there's salvation in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given mankind by which we, by which we must be saved. John 5, 24, Jesus said, Very truly, he who hears my word and believes on him who sent me has everlasting life and will not be judged, but has been crossed over from death to life. John 10, 27 and 28, My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them everlasting life and no one can snatch them out of my hands. Acts 2, 21, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How are we saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you'll just confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead. You'll be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Revelation 3, 5. The one who is victorious like them will be clothed in white. I will not blot the name of that person out of the book of life, but I will acknowledge that name individually before my Father and His angels. It's sad to say, at the end of the Revelation, in chapter 20, verse 15, anyone's name who was not found written into the book of life was cast, tossed, thrown, hurled into the lake of fire. To spend eternity. 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Some of us understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you and you and you and you and me, not willing that anyone perish, but all come to repentance. Cooter made a choice. She made a choice to accept Jesus as her Savior. She made a choice to come in and sell out and be dedicated to her husband and family and to the ministry God had called them to. She made a choice to love no matter the condition that her life was in. 
She made a choice to minister. She made a choice to share that gospel with people that they too could know Jesus and be with her one day in eternity in heaven in the kingdom of God. And she made a choice to love them where they're at, not where she wanted them to be. Pastor Starks and Miss Wondell shared the ministry of Jupiter Road Baptist Church and it's literally circled this globe. The dynamics for the Starks family has changed today with Wondell going home. The dynamics for the Jupiter Road Baptist Church has changed as what I call one of our last leaders and co-pastor of our church has gone home. But now they left us to carry out the ministry and what they taught us to do and how they taught us to love. God was Brother Jamie's strong right arm. But Wendell was his mighty left. Today we celebrate a wonderful, amazing, loving lady. And I want to close with saying that Brother Jamie taught us the word how to give and how to love. But Wendell Cooter starts, live the way for us to love. Would you pray with me? Right now, as we bow our heads in prayer, just before we pray, Abel comes to close and sing, and then Brother Gerald will pray. If there's anyone here, Kudu would want you to know that if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, to accept Him. And there's nothing magical you have to do. As Romans told us, all you just have to do is, is just confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead, and you'll be saved. She wants you to have that opportunity to accept Jesus. This may be the time, the moment that God prepared for you to find Him as your Savior. And I'm going to pray a prayer right now that if you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior, that you can have that hope, you can have that assurance of being with Him in eternity. And just pray this prayer with me right now. My Lord God and Father, I believe in Jesus. Your son. I believe that he came and he died on the cross. He shed his blood for my sins. And I accept him right now as my Lord, God, and Savior. Please come into my heart. Let me come into your rest, into your keep, keep into your kingdom. I believe and trust in you now, Jesus. I love you, my Father, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. If right now you just ask Jesus into your heart, the next thing you need to do is you need to be baptized as a public testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. If you don't have a church, if you don't have a place to be baptized, you accept Jesus, please come and see me. We'll find a place for you. But I hope us today will leave here today sharing the love of Cooter, the love of Jesus, and sharing the gospel of Christ that others might come with us so that it's not just all smoke that the vanity passes away, that the time we have left before we reach the day that God calls us home, that we use every breath, every muscle, all of our strength in serving Him and witnessing for Him. Lord, we love You. We thank You in Jesus' name that these have come together today to celebrate and remember when else starts. Lord, we thank You for her life. We thank You for her love. We thank You for her ministry. And Lord, let us all be servants for You. That one day when we come to your kingdom, you'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, take this time. Bless us. Let us bless you. As we close now, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
One lane, you have to keep moving back. I'm 20 years old. I gotta get. I gotta get somewhere. And uh, so, the relationship that Cooter and I had were not long conversations. They were just moments. It was a relationship of moments, and she had words uh, that encouraged me and, and affirmed me. Uh, there were times that after church, she would come right behind me and put her arm around me and rub my shoulders. I'm sure she rubbed some of your shoulders too. She said, oh, you put it on top shelf. You did so good today. And there were times that she would actually run her fingers through my hair. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she would say, you have such beautiful hair. And you sing so beautifully. And I believed it, of course. I know it's not all true, but I believed it. And what an honor it is for me to, to have been able to be a part of these celebrations of two of my most favorite people in the entire world. And I'm um, so blessed. I'm sure you're blessed. And you feel the same way that our lives just crossed and, and then they, they just became who they were in my life. And I don't think I would be who I am today. Uh, if it wasn't for them. So I love them so much. I love them so much. I still do. And I think about them often. But anyway, she was quite a bit of, quite a, bit of a diva. And let me finish my story. Uh, Leslie was getting mad. And she's like, can't you just stay in one, just in one plane and you're driving all over the place? And Cooter said, he's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Leave him alone. Hey, well, you're a good driver. Can you hear her saying that? Yeah. I love that lady. She did have the last word. I love what she said. She said, I, I love Jesus. This is a song. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee. The thoughts of sin are reason. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior, art thou? If
Starks ladies, if you would come up here over down on the floor, Leslie, Lisa, and Laurel. Uh, and then I want the extended family to be right over here if you want to see them before you go. Uh, we're going to give you that opportunity to do so. And again, thank you so much for honoring Cooter and being here today and supporting Lessa, Leslie, Lisa, and Laurel. And if you didn't get a Cooter uh, Court of Life, name and address, I'll send it to you. Thank you for being here. God bless.
Hey, man. trying to avoid it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just be down here waiting. Yeah. Lisa sent me up here. I said I don't really want to climb them stairs. <laughs>
just a little bit.
Miss Renee Stark, what a great lady she was, uh, a wonderful friend to Nancy and I. And we loved her much and we'll cherish her memory. So we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just uh, praise your holy name and thank you for the great and almighty God that you are. Thank you for Renee and her life. Thank you for this day and pray that you bless the Lord today, Lord. And, uh, we just uh, thank you that we had a part of her life, Lord, and uh, what a great lady she was. And, uh, thank you for all the lives that she did touch through the years, Lord. So we uh, just uh, thank you and praise you for all the things, Lord. And, I pray that in the, that you bless her uh, family, Lord, in, in the coming days and weeks ahead as uh, they reflect on your memory and her memory, Lord, I pray that uh, you bless them, Lord. Uh, they'll have some sad times and some happy times. And then uh, I pray that you bless them in those times. And uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for all your many, many blessings. Thank you for the great lady that she was, Lord, and uh, thank you that, uh, uh, that you, we were blessed uh, to be friends of her, Lord, through the years. And we'll cherish that, Lord. And, and uh, God, we just, uh, just pray for you and thank you again for her life. And, Lord, uh, again, thank you to bless her family. And uh, thank you and pray for you in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for being here and welcome you back. It's kind of like we were just here last year. Time flies, but this is going to be a great, good old, another homecoming Jupiter Road Baptist Church service. I hope it brings back great memories, but the most important thing is we're going to celebrate a wonderful life. There's joy here today because of the great person Wanell Starks was and the influence she was on her life. Wanell Warren Starks was born to Benjamin Sloan Warren and Opal Faye Tyner Warren on June 6, 1933, D-Day, in Cairns, Texas. She was proud to say she was from the same town as Big Tex. She was born the fourth of six siblings. Wanell is preceded in death by both her parents, her adoring husband, James Aubrey Starks, and her siblings, Blundell Early, Bobby Joe Warren, Maury Whalen Warren, Ted Howard Warren, and Jesse Wendell Warren. Wanell is survived by her daughters, Oma Laurel Shirley of Dallas, Texas, Lisa Lynn Russo of Irving, Texas, and Leslie Jean Darby of Kilgore, Texas. She had six grandchildren, Amber Laura Lee, Aaron of Dallas, Texas, is her husband. Aaron Winnell Broccoli, Damien of the Colony, Texas, Damien, her husband. Stephen Matthew Shirley, Jennifer of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Anna Lisa Russo of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Haley Elizabeth Nicodemus, Alex, her husband of Athens, Texas. And James Tyner Darby of Midland, Texas. And she was blessed with eight great grandchildren. James Hayden Warren of Athens, Texas, Asher Harden Lee, Elijah Aaron Lee, and Stevie Grace Lee of Dallas, Texas, Silas Aubrey Shirley, Judah Clyde Shirley, Ezra Wanell Shirley, and Naomi Jewel Shirley of Lake Charles, Louisiana. She cherished her relationships with her sons in law, Steve Shirley and Rob Russo along with scores of extended family and friends from whom she loved to sit and to visit through the years. Wanell's honorary ushers are Brian Haas, who couldn't be with us today, he's in Belgium, Keith Herod, Steve O'Kelly, Brian Tillman, Taylor Tokar, Tyler Tokar, David Whittington, and Steve Whittington. Like I said, today's going to be a celebration It'll bring back memories, and one of those great memories, and a person that one will love to hear to sing, he's going to sing for us right now, Brother Mel Newton. Uncle, Uncle Mel, yes. <laughs> Go 
Y'all don't know how hard it is for me to stand up here for some of you that's got the voice that needs to be up here singing. What else? Love to hear me sing. I sang to her the day she passed away. I sang, got into her face and sang Amazing Grace. Just her and I. And what a blessing it was and is for me to sing Amazing Grace to her. I want to Sing Amazing Grace for you right now. But this is going to be different. I want you to sing to me. Amazing Grace.